Bass here from Aussie RC Playground and welcome to my very first double review. This one is for the Latrax Rally and the HPI Micro RS4. Uh, I was going to do an individual review for both and then do kind of a comparison video. So it's gonna be like three videos for both cars. Uh, but I've decided to sort of mash it up all into one because these are quite small. There's really not a lot to go into other than the uh, drivability of them and what they have to offer. So um, we're going to get straight into it. Um, both of these come completely ready to run, which means that you really have to buy nothing else. And they give you batteries for the remotes, they give you batteries for the cars, and they also give you charges for the batteries included in the cars, which I think is fantastic. Uh, I'll start off with the HPI RS4 just very quickly and show you exactly what it comes with out of the box. Now, I did cover a lot of this uh, on both cars when I did the unboxing, but if you haven't seen those videos, I'll cover this off very quickly for you. Uh, so the uh, charger included for the RS4 is this guy right here. One of the things that I really like about this charger is that it came with a variety of different plugs uh, that you can swap out. So depending on where you are in the world, you know, if you buy this car online, um, you've got a plug that will just slide in uh, depending on the uh, country that you're in or even if you decide to uh, go traveling you don't have to take any uh, adapters or anything like that you just slide in the plug uh, that you uh, that belongs to where you are and, and you can charge up your uh, your car that way so a uh, very cool little feature uh, one of the things I don't like is that it does not have any sort of light indicators on the charger so uh, you do have to time it uh, because I believe it takes about four hours to charge up the battery battery that is included, um, which is quite a long time, but um, uh, there's no light indicator on this uh, on this charger, which is a little bit disappointing, but it does come with the extra plugs, which I think is a great plus. Uh, they give you a little bag of some spare parts. Uh, you do have an Allen key, and there's also a plastic key in here, I believe. Uh, there's some spare servo horns, a couple of pinion gears, some spare body posts, and a couple other little bits and pieces. Nothing too fancy, but uh, kind of handy to have uh, something like that come with the car. They also give us a couple of spare body pins, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, sticker sheet, um, you get this little guy here. Um, down the bottom here, there's actually some uh, uh, rotor stickers that I've actually mounted onto the car itself. So when you look through the wheels, it kind of looks like slotted brakes. So uh, quite a cool little feature that HBI included there. Uh, one of the manuals, just a bunch of warnings and things like that, written in a few different languages as well. And of course, the all-important manual, which they've done a very good job with, uh, large uh, A4 size type of pages, very detailed, a lot of uh, useful information in here, written in a few different languages as well. So we'll keep that there. The Latrax Rally, uh, also of course they give you uh, batteries for the uh, remote as I said. The Latrax Rally comes a little bit less equipped, I guess you'd say. Uh, you get the charger, uh, which in this case has the uh, USA plug on it, uh, and it has the uh, Tamiya plug on the other end. Uh, this one here, uh, for the RS4, comes with this funny looking uh, plug. I know that there is a name for it, I'm not familiar with the name, uh, I'm sure some of you will know, but uh, it's quite a, a unique sort of plug for the battery. Uh, so this one here actually has a little light indicator so when you do start charging up your pack it'll turn green to let you know that it's charged and you can unplug the battery. Which I think uh, you know HBR could have done that very easily and uh, it wouldn't have cost him any extra money. Uh, the battery that it comes with is a five cell nickel metal hydrate. Uh, it is a six volt only, it's 1200 milliamps and again it has a Tamiya plug so you can charge this on uh, you know any of your aftermarket chargers as well uh, very easily. Uh, the manual is uh, pretty plain, a lot smaller, uh, just black and white, but just as uh, detailed as the HPI, uh, also written in a few different languages, has all the necessary information that you need here, set up your ESC, work on the car, all that type of information, part numbers and so forth, it's all there. So that is pretty much uh, how these guys come equipped. Um, I'll just push all of this aside and we'll start with the remotes which are up the front here. Uh, these are the remotes for both cars. Um, I'm going to start with the RS4 remote and I'm going to simply say that I absolutely hate it. Um, I hate it purely because of how it feels in your hand. It just, it feels weird. It's really weird. It's very strangely designed. I think whoever designed this remote was uh, high on crack or something like that. I don't know what who or what they were thinking uh, when they designed this. Even the battery compartment is kind of like on the uh, on the actual handle here, kind of goes in there. 
It's very strange how, how they've designed this. Uh, the trigger feels extremely light. There's very little resistance. Uh, the wheel kind of feels a bit oversized and it's kind of in, in an awkward position to like where all the other remotes that I've used in the past. Um, it's kind of weird. It, I just don't like the look of it. I don't like the feel of it. It's, it's absolutely terrible uh, in my opinion. The best positive about this remote, however, is that it has all the necessary trimmings that you would expect. So, um, you know, you've got your reverse switches, you've got the steering jewel rate, and you've got your steering and, uh, and throttle trim up the top here. Very easy to access, very easy to tune, uh, but it just has an absolutely terrible feel, and uh, it just looks cheap. It looks, it does not look hobby grade at all. So, um, I really, I'm not a fan of this remote. Um, the Traxxas remote, uh, although it says Latrax on the front here, it's actually brand Latraxxus on the back. Feels a lot better in the hand. It's a much simpler remote. Uh, you really only have steering trim here and there's a set button up the top that you can uh, tune certain things based on beeps and blinks on, on the light. Runs on four double A's just like the uh, HBI one, but it feels so much better. Uh, the trigger has some weight to it. Uh, it feels a lot better in the hand, feels a lot more pro. Um, even though it is plain Jane, when you're driving the car, to me, uh, this one wins over that one, hands down, uh, no doubt about that. So we'll move these aside, out of shot, and uh, we'll move on to the cars themselves. Now, when you look at the cars, there's obviously a couple of significant differences. Number one is that the HPI looks absolutely killer. This is a licensed body, it is the Ken Block Ford Fiesta, and uh, it just Stunning, absolutely stunning looking body. Uh, very, very nicely detailed rear spoiler, all the stickers and decals, um, everything down to the uh, you know the little rotors inside the wheels as well. Uh, really well detailed. The one thing I'm going to complain about uh, with this particular look of the car is this guy right here. I can't quite work out why HPI would go to the extent of licensing a body uh, in such a small micro detail. Um, and then spoil it with this great big tube sticking out of the car. Um, Latrax, on the other hand, has a much simpler looking body. It's not really licensed. Uh, it's certainly not ugly in my eyes. I mean, some people may dispute that. That's, that's totally fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Some people may hate the HPI. Um, but I have absolutely nothing against the look of this car. Regardless of how good this looks and how detailed this is, this doesn't look terrible to me. Uh, it comes in a few different colors um, and it looks perfectly fine in, in my book. I think it's, it's, it's well scaled, it suits the look of the car um, and it just it looks good. Um, so much so that I actually went out and bought myself a clear body. Um, these are only worth about 10 bucks. Uh, I've had this one probably for a couple of months now. I still haven't opened it purely because I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to uh, paint it up as. I'm waiting to get some inspiration to work out what color scheme I'm going to go for and how I'm going to paint it up uh, because I don't want to make it look anything like the original car and I do want to have a unique theme to it but I haven't quite decided on that yet. Um, so you know the HBI looks better but I'm not going to deduct any points away from the Latrax because I think it actually looks quite good. So taking these off very simply uh, this is uh, traditionally done with two holes on the front, two holes on the back on the roof. Comes off very easy. The HBI, however, um, is a slightly different story. Uh, there are two body posts on the on the front, on the bonnet, on the hood, whatever. Uh, but then at the back, the posts kind of stick out through the rear bumper. So rather than coming through the top, they actually come out through the back here. It's not really a negative. It's just I can't work out why. Um, I guess maybe you can swap them around if you really want to, but uh, I don't know. It's just it's weird. I don't, I don't I don't know why they did it this way. Um, I just find it strange. It's like I said, it's not a negative. It's just meh. Why? Um, so we'll move that aside. I'll actually put them maybe just in shot here so you guys can still see them, and we'll move on to the to the to the main cars. Now you can see there's quite a, a bit of a size difference between the two. Uh, probably a couple of inches in length, I think. Uh, width wise, if I can try and do this, uh, you'll be able to see uh, there's actually quite a, a fair bit of uh, difference in width as well. So the Latrax is, is quite a, a bigger car. Now, when you sort of look at, you know, take away the size of it and you look at how these are, these are built, 
I'm gonna say that the HPI has a slightly higher quality build. Um, there's a lot less slack in the wheels. Um, it just, everything feels a little bit tighter, feels a little bit be better put together. Having said all that, it's very fragile. Um, there's really not a lot of adjustability. There's not a lot of tunability. You can't adjust suspension dynamics in any way, shape or form. Um, you know, the, the, there's one single shock at the back. It's a solid axle at the back. And there's one single shot, the shock that sort of works. Um, the shock is kind of uh, horizontally positioned and it sort of works uh, this way. So there's no independent suspension at the rear. Uh, the front does have independent suspension, uh, but it's really, there's very little travel in it. Uh, it's really not designed to go over any sort of rough terrain. Uh, you really need to keep this car on flat surfaces, much like this bench here. So tiles, floorboards, a polished floor in your garage to a certain extent, even your driveway, but you really need to be you know, very smooth. Uh, as far as taking it out on the road, I certainly don't recommend it. It kind of bumps around and bobs around. And uh, even driving it on my driveway, I actually managed to break one of the wheels, which is this guy right here. Now, the way that these wheels mount on, uh, they just slide out like so, and uh, they're not actually bolted to the car. Uh, there's three little grooves inside the wheel here and uh, they kind of slot in to the actual wheel hub and the wheel hub have, has uh, different length slots and uh, depending on where you position the wheel it will push the wheel out or um, make the wheel sit in a little bit so I think this is set up on the shortest groove to give it the widest track so if you set it up on the, na on the longer grooves it will push the wheels in and give you a much narrower track same process at the front here uh, this is a belt driven car and it does have a, a full size steering servo up the front here uh, the battery itself is basically i think it's about five double a's taped together and they are uh, very tightly squeezed in between the belt so um, you've got the upper belt here the sort of and you got the the lower side of the belt going through here as well um, the battery does come out of the chassis. Um, initially when I bought this, I wasn't quite sure how to remove it. There's two body pins holding the whole thing in place. You gotta sort of push the battery down and then it's kind of double-sided taped to the top of the, um, uh, or to the underside of the top uh, deck of this chassis. And uh, you kind of need to slide it out from there. I've never really bothered. I took it out once, I worked out how to do it, and uh, it's, the battery pretty much lives in, in this car because uh, taking it on and off, it's just an absolute nightmare. Um, so even if you buy more than one battery, to swap out batteries, be prepared to spend some time. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. Um, so I kind of charge the battery in the car. I, I leave it here and, and that's pretty much where it lives on and off switch up the top here. And uh, that's that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it's, it's very fragile, there's, there's not a lot of strength here, but it is pretty well put together. There's not a lot of slack in your wheels. Um, obviously, there's almost zero slack at the back. Um, I did have the pinion pop out. The pinion is made out of plastic, uh, and it's not bolted on uh, or held in place to the motor shaft in any way. It just sort of slides in, and it's a very tight, snug fit, and there it sits. I did have it fall out once, uh, thankfully I found it and I was able to put it back in and, and keep on going. But they do give you a couple of spare pinions even though they are different size to the original that comes in the box. Uh, the motor is extremely small and I've heard people say that they, uh, you know, they wanted me to convert it to brushless. I don't know what brushless system would fit in here, it, it is minute, um, it is so tiny and on top of that. There is a post right at the end of the motor, of uh, the stock motor here, that will prevent you to put a longer motor. Um, even though there is clearance between the, the, the back of the motor and the wheel, um, there's probably only about three or four millimeters between the back of the motor and that post. So you need, do need to be very, very careful uh, if you do decide to change this to brushless, uh, which I, I would find completely useless to be honest, um, that you, know, you, you, you get a really tiny, tiny motor to fit in here. Um, Steering wise, I have to say it actually steers pr pretty well, especially with a full size servo in here. Um, certainly had no issues with the steering. I think it was uh, fairly responsive. Uh, and I'll, we'll touch a little bit more on the drivability of the car, but I want to switch my attention back to the uh, Latrax now. Um, this guy obviously being a little bit bigger, um, 
you know, there's a lot more tunability here. Uh, there's three different mounting positions for your shocks on the shock towers. Uh, there are no optional positions on the A-arms, so you can really only angle the, the, the shocks uh, based on the position on the shock towers. Adjustable body posts front and rear. Uh, similar to these you can you can raise raise these body posts up a little bit You can't really lower them uh, lower them anymore. That's as low as they go But you can raise them up even the rear ones you can bring them up a little bit if you wish um, This one as I said is belt driven this one is shaft driven uh, the motor on this one is mounted uh, from east to west whilst here is from uh, nose to tail um, so it, the problem with the shaft drive and having the motor like this is when you actually try to drift, uh, it'll drift better one way than it does the other, um, purely because of the centrifugal force. Uh, whilst with the belt drive, you do tend to have a little bit more even drift left and right. Having said all that, uh, this one here drives a hell of a lot better. Um, and as I was saying, um, you know, you have a lot more tunability here. There's also some more optional parts available, such as aluminium shock towers. There's aluminium shocks as well uh, that, are that I believe are now oil-filled. Uh, the stock ones that come in the car are not oil-filled. Um, and everything here is waterproof as well, whilst here it is not. Um, so something to keep in mind as well. It may not really be a necessity, especially, you know, given the size of these cars, they're probably gonna be used mostly indoors but you do have the versatility of being able to take this guy outside, perhaps even on a rainy day, and uh, not worry about your electronics failing. Um, this does have a slightly higher ground clearance, longer wheelbase as well as wider wheelbase, giving you a little bit more versatility in where you can run it, as opposed to the HPI. Um, and as I said, there are some optional parts out there, different bodies you can buy. Well, I mean, you can paint them up differently. Uh, there's also different wheels, so if you don't like the white, you want to get chrome. Uh, I believe that I've seen uh, both Tower Hobbies and A-Main have got uh, spare parts for these. Um, you know, and you can get different color wheels if you wish. Um, the motor is a little bit bigger in this one, so you, you do have the option of going brushless, and I know that uh, some of my viewers have already purchased one of these and, and gone uh, brushless with them, um, and they say that the, it handles it fine. Uh, this does have metal gearing in diffs both front and rear. Uh, it does not have a slipper clutch, uh, so it's direct drive straight to your spur, so just keep that in mind. Um, you know, punching the throttle constantly is gonna put a lot of strain on some components. Um, the steering servo in this guy is a lot smaller. Uh, it's a little micro steering servo uh, than the uh, HBI RS4. Uh, there is a servo saver in here, and you can see that I can turn the wheels uh, without the servo actually turning. And I'll need to move the servo arm to be able to, uh, to, to steer it with the servo moving. Uh, the downside with the Latrax is that there is a lot of slop in the steering um, and even in the rear wheels there's a lot of play um, in these uh, components. So the quality here is probably not of the standard, the assembly quality let me say, is not of the same standard as the HBI. But the quality of the plastics and the durability of the vehicle, I think, uh, supersedes the HPI. Um, also, given the fact that you all, you do have a little bit more versatility in where you can drive it, you can probably take this guy up on the road, provided your bitumen uh, is fairly smooth. Rafa bitumen is still going to, you know, bounce this thing everywhere. It's probably not ideal to do that. Um, so, uh, just touching again on the drivability of both cars, uh, to me. At the end of the day, taking aside what they come with, what the remotes look like, um, you know, when you drive the cars, if I was to pick one only, I would pick the, the Latrax, uh, purely because it just drives better. Even with the fact that it still, you know, it drifts better one way than it does the other, this handles a lot better. It seems to have also a tighter turning circle than the HBI. Surprisingly, smaller car, bigger servo, uh, but it has a slightly wider turning circle. Uh, this does drift okay, but because of its small compact size, it's actually quite hard to hold a constant drift. This one here, because it is slightly bigger, it's just the right size to be able to hold a nice drift. And, uh, and you know, you can drift it the other way. It does take a little bit of more practice and it is a lot trickier, but um, 
it just drives a lot better and and the versatility of it and the durability of it and um, you know the fact that you can you now have option parts for this thing as well to me that the Latrax is is just a, a better car um, you know I know that some people will go for the HPI purely based on its looks uh, because it is a licensed body and uh, of course now you can get the uh, the big brother the WR8 uh, in the exact same color scheme um, the 1.8 scale uh, rally car is now available in this uh, in in this body style um, so it, it makes sense that a lot of people would go for this particular car uh, purely for its looks um, regardless of you know how inferior or whatever it drives compared to the Latrax um, but at the end of the day you know RC cars to me I enjoy them for the fact that you know you can drive them and um, and, and how they drive um, how they look you know that that can change I mean if you're as talented as say somebody like Hemistorm you can probably paint something like this in the exact same color scheme as the Ford Fiesta with uh, you know some patience some masking tape and a few cans of paint um, but uh, I'm certainly not going to give that a go because I don't have the patience and I'm nowhere near as talented as he is. Um, but it can be done. Um, so to me, uh, Dollar Tracks is the winner. Now another thing to consider as well, uh, which I haven't mentioned, is the price differences between the two. Um, this is about $160 for a smaller car uh, that is quite fragile. There are no optional parts for this. In fact, I was actually trying to find a spare wheel for this car and I still haven't been able to find it. I think I jumped on Tower Hobbies a couple of weeks ago and I, or A-Main, probably both. And although they sell the car, I can't find a single spare part for this RC. Meanwhile, the Latrax, there are plenty of. You can get spare motors, spare ESCs, you can basically build a car from scratch based on the spares that they have. There's also uh, ball bearings uh, that you can buy for this now because I believe this is all uh, bushings in here at the moment. So you can get ball bearings for it and get all these little option parts for, for these cars uh, whilst there's just nothing available for the HBI uh, Micro RS4. Um, so all that said, if you want this car because of how it looks um, and you're not too fast about the drivability or the durability of it, um, I can't really blame you because it does look fantastic. Um, but if you're not going to pick the the, the Latrax uh, because of its looks uh, and not considering how well it drives, um, I, I think that that's a silly move. I would definitely, you know, if you want a better driving car, uh, this to me is, is the winner, uh, regardless of whether or not it has spare parts or an extra set of stickers or what have you. Um, this to me is, is the better car out of the two. Um, and that's, uh, you know, given the, the, the time that I've spent with them and, and both uh, driving indoors and outdoors, I, I favor the, the, the Latrax um, easily over the uh, HBI as far as drivability goes. Um, and then, then of course you take into consideration uh, the price differences, the, the spare parts availability, all of that. Latrax for me just wins down, uh, wins this one hands down. Um, but that is a gorgeous looking uh, HBI, no doubt about that. Um, that is pretty much it for this double review comparison slash battle royale between the two of them. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you got something out of it and uh, got some useful information. Uh, if you did, please be sure to hit the like button before you go. Don't forget to check out Aussie RC Playground on Facebook. I will have a link in the description and that will give you a bit of a heads up as to what's going on on YouTube. And um, thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you guys again soon.